what is AI? Anna Brand here. I wanted to do another video on AI because I've received a lot of comments, a lot of questions, and a lot of confusion and understanding of what exactly is AI. And when I show a finished image, people will say, what of that image is AI? So I'm gonna kind of back it up a little bit. On my screen, you see a baby image. This was photographed, this is a real baby, and was photographed with my camera. Understand that many people will use AI in different ways. I use it as a way to simply enhance my existing images. So I'm not using it to produce photography. That's still my main job. But much like you go and you buy overlays or you buy different things and backdrops and things to enhance your image, that's what AI is doing. I'm actually going to show you how to generate the AI using Discord. I'm in a mid-journey bot. Mid-journey is the AI technology. I've been working with Alex Robles for the past couple of weeks in trying to find a way to communicate this to our membership and the students and photographers around the world. So I'm gonna to try to simplify it as much as humanly possible. Mid-journey is the AI technology. Think of it as the server, the computer that we're using to talk to. There are different types of different types of AI technology. Now, I'm in Discord right now. There are also other types of chats that you can use with AI. We're using Discord. Discord is the way that we're gonna communicate with the AI servers, okay? So it's simply a chat bot. We also have a community. If you see this little dot right here, it says Anna Brandt, Anna Brandt Creative Online Mentorship. This is the community that we've been working in week after week where our students have been creating tons of samples and generating from around the world. These images are a combination. In the create area, you can see what they've asked the AI servers to bring back based upon their prompts. So every week there'll be an area where they can create and they put in a prompt. Soft green wall with natural vines, no flowers, with light coming from one side. Then what happens is it spits back four images. You then can choose that image. You pick one of the, the numbers or you can ask for a variation. That's what the V means. Then if you ask for a variation, it'll come and give you a different variation. So with the community that I've created every week, we have a particular topic. Then the students come in here, they put in their searches, and then they go and they create images marrying this AI technology with their own images. I posted week nine and this particular image right here is the AI and I'll show you the prompt that I used to get it. This is the straight out of camera image. This is the edited image and I married it together. I did do a video of my edits because I do teach an online editing course and I also teach an online AI course. This as well. Also, this is the mom. This is the AI, I rotated it, created an overlay, used some blending layers and created this image as well. Now what the students will go is we just opened this up yesterday, they'll start doing their searches and prompts in here. Now it's free, but there's limited, okay? So when you start out, this service is free, but it, depending upon how many images and how much time you come back, it is limited and so many people buy a subscription. It's very inexpensive. I think it's 10 to $15 a month. What's great about that is then when you have your own private you know, area, because you've paid, I now have my own little mid-journey bot area. So other people can't see the result of what I'm searching. So all of these images that you see are direct results from my own prompt. The prompt is a peachy colored texture cream wall with soft peachy peonies blurred on one side. I did aspect ratio 16.9. I then chose this particular image, okay? And then I ran it again. I chose this particular image. I right click, I hit save. Then I took that image and started editing in Photoshop. 
Now, because I have hundreds of images that I have found in my own network, I have created a library for those who are enrolled in my online community that I showed in the previous video. And then those images are free for those in my community to download and use. So I'm going to just give you an example. When we do this, we type in imagine. And so when you type in imagine, you can see that now it's asking you for the prompt. So a lot of people say, do you do this, then find an image to work with, or do you have the image and then search on what you're looking for? I think it's a little bit of both. It depends what I'm working on. Right now, there's a baby image here. We had cherry blossoms around. Mom really liked cherry blossoms. So then I think to myself, well, rather than going to Etsy and looking for cherry blossom backdrops, or rather than finding cherry blossoms and photographing them and making them myself, why don't I just come over here and put in a prompt and I say, find our textured wall full of cherry blossoms soft and a bit blurry and then I'm going to say aspect ratio 16.9 and I'm going to see what happens when I do that it says waiting to start walk away get yourself a cup of coffee if I'm on a roll and I'm on a creative roll I'll start putting in a bunch of prompts walk away from it and come back now based upon what the server brings back to me I then will decide that's perfect or I'm going to set variations. Now, there's a million other components. We can set different parameters. We can actually upload an image and search on a particular image and, you know, make some adjustments and tweaks. There's 5,000 ways to Sunday to do th doing this. I'm showing you very, very basic because a lot of people, when I'm posting something, they don't understand what is AI and what is not AI. And I get it. Two months ago, I had no idea what this technology was and I was very much confused. And now I totally get it. So looking at this, I can say, ooh, I really like number four, and I can pick number four, and it will spit back the image. Or I can say, give me a variation on number four, and let's try again. I think I want something a little more creamier in the background. So I'm going to say, imagine a fine, uh, I'll say a soft, I'll say a soft, creamy wall with fine art textures of cherry blossoms spread all around slightly blurry and then I'm going to say aspect ratio 16.9 oops aspect ratio 16.9 and see what happens. So you can see that these are my variations for my first one. This is the one that I chose. I'm going to do save image. There's ways that you can make this high res. There's ways that you can um, make these bigger. You can print your own backdrops. You can up your own, open up your own store in Etsy and sell your digital creations. You can manipulate these. A lot of people who are selling or who were selling their own digital backdrops, they're manipulating it. They're taking it and then making it their own. Maybe they're editing it. Maybe they're adding more texture. Maybe they're adding more light. You don't necessarily have to use this but it's rather than going and getting stock image or paying for stock image or trying to find something on the web, you're creating it with your own prompts and words. Now, a lot of people are going to say, who owns the copyright? Well, if you do any search on AI, you own the copyright, but so does everybody else. Now, a lot of people will say, well, is it going on the web and stealing other people's work? No, but it is going on the web and scouring and trying to find inspiration based upon the prompts you're using and then spitting back images. Now, I really like this one, number three. That's super pretty. I also like number one. And then I want a variation on number three and I want a variation on number one. And I'll usually just save a bunch. That's why I have a nice big library. Now, I'm gonna right click on here and I'm gonna do save image and I'm gonna save this right here in my AI samples. I'm gonna come over here to Photoshop and I'm gonna open up that image. Now, I use LSP textures and actions. I love them. I think Lauren is brilliant, and I think what she does is amazing. So you can use different things to make this work, or you can manually do it. So I think that I want to flip this because I like this here, but I want to rotate it. So I'm going to rotate the image 180 degrees, and then I'm going to rotate it again 
and then that way the flowers are coming down this way okay the lights coming here this is a little darker over here so you definitely have to pay attention to you know which way the light is going I'm gonna save another version of this so I'm gonna show you two ways that I can use this so I can come over here and because I'm a big fan of LSP actions I can come over here and she has an action that says texture pack mini action where you can add your own textures now this is a flower texture you can do it with just grungy textures or anything you want if I hit play it's gonna ask me to find the texture that I have so I'm gonna grab the one that I just used I'm gonna stretch it and I'm gonna bring it in and if I double click on here see how it overlaid right on top of it and then what I can do is I can just paint it off of her face and have it in the background. See how I can do this? And just using that action, all I do is just paint it off of her face and remove it and technically I can be done. See how pretty that was? I absolutely love how easy it was to just use Lauren's uh, action and in just less than a minute, I have it as an overlay in the background. So that's a way of marrying it with other technology. I'm just gonna save this sample. Now, another thing I could do is I could get rid of that and I could come back here to my original, okay? And I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna move it to a new window and I'm just gonna drag it right on top and then I'm gonna stretch it out and I'm gonna transform and scale it right over here and go here and make it kind of nice and big. Now, there's two things I could do. I could come in here into my blending modes and do overlay, which makes it look very similar to Lauren's action, right? Or I could sit here and I could reduce it a little bit so I can see my subject. I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna do select subject. And there's a million different ways you can do. You can mask it, you can do whatever you wanna do, but I'm just gonna keep this very simple. And then I'm gonna come here and I'm just gonna start erasing. And I'm just gonna kinda do it in the middle because I kind of like how the texture is falling on the actual prop itself. And then I'm gonna come here and bring the opacity a little bit darker and be like, ooh, that looks a little too fake. But let me just come down a little bit more. And then, wow, what if I did that and brought it up well, actually, I actually don't want to move it now because I've already erased that. But brought it in there and it's like, wow, I really like that. And it looks very similar to the other one that I did with Lauren, but it's just a little bit more subtle. And so if I come back over here to my layers, let me go back on my history for a minute. There we go. And so I'm going to go to my layers and I'm going to just go a little bit more this way. There we go. And then I'm going to save it as well. So this is just a tiny bit of sample of what is AI. Basically, it's what I love about it is you can basically speak anything you want into existence. So I can come over here and I can say, imagine the Brooklyn Bridge. at sunrise. I say that because I just left New York City and photographed the Brooklyn Bridge and I'll be back there this summer doing some client sessions. So what if I say I want inspiration for a shoe? I want to understand, you know, the idea of what the Brooklyn Bridge may look like at sunrise. I want to get an idea. We can use AI for inspiration. We can use it for storyboarding. We can use it to give clients ideas of future sessions. There's so many things we can do. I don't think that you should use it to make work that you can't create, but instead be inspired by it. And see, then we go, oh wow, look at how beautiful that is. And then I can say, okay, I really like number four. And then I can get an idea of what the Brooklyn Bridge looks like at sunrise. And I was just there and it pretty much looked very much like that. So hopefully that gives you an idea of what AI technology it is and how you can use it. For more information, visit my annabrandeducation.com site and join our community.